All right, so I'm here with uh, Hairbrain Screams. I got screams. Hair <laughs> brain Schemes. That's our horror game division. That's, that's right, exactly. <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I get the trademark on that, guys. You can license it for me. <laughs> All right, so we got Jordan and Mike from uh, I'm, I'm Very This. I got an atlas behind me. This is fantastic. So tell me a little bit about what you guys are trying to do with Battletech. When are we going to be able to throw our money at you? You know, to shut up and take my money. We are going to make a turn-based tactical Battletech game. Right, set, uh, it's a single-player campaign set in the Machiavellian feudal era of 3025. Right? Very detailed in terms of how the mech behaves, uh, being able to tweak out the mech, get different performance from it, uh, and similarly very detailed in terms of how the mech warrior skill trees are. So you can really guide your mech warriors um, in, in, uh, in getting them specialized in different types of mechs and different types of weapon systems. Right? Um, the, uh, the game uh, in a larger context is a, uh, you know, did I mention you're, ma you're managing a Lance of Four mechs? No, but no, that's a good No, I will mention that you are managing a Lance of Four mechs. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, turn-based. I did say that, right? Yes. Turn-based. Sorry, it's like day... We've been talking all day. Been... <laughs> yeah, so, so we're losing so it good. already. We're setting the 3025 era. You're managing a, a mercenary company from like day one. So you got zero reputation. And you're going to have to build that up within that Machiavellian environment. So it's going to take a while before uh, building it up with smaller players, before the big noble houses start to pay attention and offer you contracts. Um, you're managing all the logistics of that unit. So you got everything from you know, what can I afford to fix before I have to put the mechs back out on the field to what do I pay the mech warriors to how the hell do I get them to the planets where the contracts are, right? Um, and which contracts you accept and how you negotiate them um, and how you perform on them determines your reputation with the houses you're working for and thus contracts that are available in the future. Okay, so on an underlying, like, I would say, I don't just want to say much story arc, but on an underlying um, game feel, are we talking like the original mech warrior style of uh, not not so much the gameplay, but the, the the mannerisms and how you went from contract and whatnot. Or are we talking more like Crescent Hawks Inception Revenge kind of? Well, you know, excellent question. And boy, you know your stuff. Uh, because a lot of people don't remember Crescent Hawks. I love that game. That was an RPG with a tactical game underneath it. Yep. We're a tactical game with a lot of story underneath us. Got so it. it's 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 but in terms of the kinds of way that you're managing an RPG, either managing your, your unit and developing characters and that there's an ongoing story, very much very much in line with that. Excellent. Excellent. I'm already excited. I'm like, shut up, take my money. So we're co-directing the game. Uh, you know, my background at Hairbrain's been in uh, art direction for some of our previous titles, so uh, he certainly. Is, he is humble. He is the creative director for all of the Shadowrun titles. So And some Shadowrun. Yeah. Which is also a very fantastic game, and I'm very glad you guys brought that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm standing between two legends. I really am. This is amazing. So it's, it's kind of old and new, right? I've been making mech games forever. His One of his first PC games ever was Mech Warrior. You know. Mech Warrior, the True first story. one? Mech Warrior 2. Mech Warrior 2. Okay. And then Mercenaries, of course. Uh, see, he's, he's late to the game. I was on the original Mech Warrior and that Crescent Hawks game. <laughs> you got me beat. <laughs> I was this tall. It's beside the point. But, yeah, so Mike's going to be co-directing the game and, and really, um, you know, trying to do the same kind of great work we've done on story and on, uh, on you know, capturing the essence of the universe. With, uh, with Battletech, right, is uh, it's always been very uh, sort of feudal and, and uh, just really grounded in this universe. So there's just a lot of opportunities to really apply that visual layer to the world, right? Uh, so the noble houses all have so much lore and history that's accumulated over the last like 30 years that uh, it's just going to be really fun to be able to dive into that and and uh, sort of make uh, make some really awesome uh, visuals out of it. Right, so I'm going to have the the Puritan question here. I know we've got the Atlas, we got a Locust, we've got the uh, I always forget this one and catapult. it drives me nuts. Catapult, and we got the Griffin over here. So other than you know these, obviously there's going to be a wide variety. How true are we sticking to the the original Battletech lore and the mechs and the names of the mechs and the types of mechs? What we want to do is actually, you know, have a solid mech tactical game that really is in the world of Battletech. So yes, it's going to be very true to lore um, and really bring that lore more to the forefront of the gameplay. Now, are we going to see um, like ships and anything that are coming in from maybe like the the Aerotech kind of face of this or anything else, or is it strictly going to be like the core Battletech stuff? Well. There are many things we'd love to do, and those are amongst those. Um, and so part of our part of the reason uh, for the Kickstarter is to be able to have the fans help us afford to put those kind of features in. Um, put so, money into this game. I want to see some flying stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> We're all for it. And you're doing art direction for this as well. So uh, Yeah, so Chris Rogers and I actually co-art directed uh, Hong Kong. So, you know, the nice thing about Hong Kong, it's, it's, it's the third game in the Shadowrun franchise, so it's a pretty mature uh, art pipeline that we've got, both for environment art and character art for the game. So our art team is really able to build on everything that we've already done and just take it to the next level. Uh, you know, so Hong Kong, obviously, it's a classic cyberpunk inspiration. There's a lot of great resources there to look at. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think the, the starting point for concept development on the game, and that was uh, Chris's department, was really the, the core team. And that was something that was really important in Dragonfall that we also wanted to really emphasize in Hong Kong was designing this really dynamic uh, cast of characters that you would fight alongside during the campaign. And then we just kind of expanded out from that. Excellent. Well, one thing I, I just want to mention in terms of what Chris and, and Mike have done so well, um, you know, we're a small shop, um, and uh, we're, we're, we build our games on top of Unity like, like many studios do. One of our challenges is how do we make our games look really unique? One of the things I'm very proud of our team is that in each of our titles, they have found a unique stylistic approach that makes the games look incredibly rich. Right, but that are within context of what we can afford to do as a small studio. I think with Shadowrun, the, the merging of the painterly style of, and the 2D painting style that they used with the 3D animation of the characters gave it a unique look that uh, was much richer than if we uh, tried to go at it as a, as a pure polygonal kind of title. One last question about Battletech, because I'm really excited. Well, two, actually. One okay. of them is, will there be like a turn-based, oh, also turn-based, is there going to be a multiplayer element where we can just battle it out on up to X number of players with their lances, or even cooperative each, you know, four people in a single lance attacking somebody else or something along those lines. We hope so, but that, it's really going to be based on the Kickstarter campaign, because the uh, the core game is, is the single player. Uh, one of the stretch goals is going to be to add a uh, multiplayer arena combat in the context of Solaris 7, uh, which was the, the big uh, arena, yeah. arena combat planet. Um, and so we, are, we truly hope we'll get to there because we love to add it. We're trying to design the system to really provide great PvP play. So hopefully, it'll, hopefully we'll get there. And that just leads me right into the last question is, when does the Kickstarter begin? So the Kickstarter is going to be at the end of September. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, you can go to battletechgame.com and enter your email address, and then we'll send you out an email to make sure you know when that game, when the, when the Kickstarter is going live. Are you going to go at the end of September? End of September. Are you going to go for like a 30 or 60 day Kickstarter? 30 day. 30 day. Okay, 30 day Kickstarter beginning of end of September. So by the end of October, this thing better be funded, or I'm coming to see you. <laughs> All right, we found Dennis, and you're the uh, project director of Hairbrain Schemes. Uh, design director. Design director. So, so I'm, I guess I'm in charge of design, or so they tell me. I misplaced it last week, but we're going to find it later. So I just tried out Necropolis. Uh, I guess the first thing that comes to mind, obviously, is uh, Dark Souls. It's a bit of a shell shaded. I feel like uh, maybe evoke some old school memories of Wind Waker as far as the style goes, but darker, yes. like the Dark Souls version. Yeah, so we, what was the inspiration? We, uh, we wanted like a high comedy... Uh, dark version of uh, say uh, uh, Dark Souls meets uh, yeah uh, Zelda is a good reference. Uh, we want a quick pickup, uh, quick death, quick turnaround for players, yeah. and just uh, fun jump in, jump out gameplay where Dark Souls players would feel completely at home. The controls are nearly identical. We love yeah. Dark Souls. Yeah, for me, I haven't really played Dark Souls, and uh, I'm terrible with controllers. So you guys will see me dying a lot here, but you'll get an idea <laughs> for the style of the game. Uh, and if you're someone who plays Dark Souls, you may, you know, oh, I love this, this play style. Now, this is a procedurally generated game. Yes. What have you done to make sure that the, the levels are both interesting and unique? There's an entire ecosystem of monsters that interrelate and fight. So particular monsters exhibit predator and prey behavior. They fight each other. They, they're found in natural ecosystems. If you see a gem eater, there are going to be fades nearby. If you see horde men, there's probably going to be grind. You start to learn these things, and you start looking out for... Uh, cues on the ground. If you see bones with gems scattered about, half chewed, you know, gem meters nearby. The machine kind of lays it all out based on little stories. We tell little vignettes, uh, but every time you play it, it's different. Now, what are you guys using uh, behind the scenes? We have a lot of developers, and they're going to be curious. Are you guys using Unity for this one as well? Yeah, you, it's a Unity-based game. How, how different is the pipeline for this game, say, versus Battletech or uh, you know Shadowrun Hong Kong? You have a very similar style as far as the art pipelines and that sort of thing? No, it's totally different. Both Shadowrun and Battletech are turn-based isometric games. Mm -hmm. uh, Shadowrun has its own kind of proprietary version of the engine for the editor, uh, so that's, that's its own thing. Uh, Battletech will probably be built native Unity. Um, 
but uh, this is totally new for harebrained schemes. It's a 3D action game. It requires a lot of new systems, a lot of new work, and a lot of animation we're not really used to doing, but we've taken up the challenge and we really love the way it's coming out and people seem to be resounding with it. They love it. Do you think maybe uh, this will open the door for some other 3D titles, possibly first person? Who knows? Uh, you know, maybe. Uh, we. we we love action games. Me and Chris Conard and Chris Rogers have brought our love of action games to Hairbrain Schemes. And, uh, you know, we really think there's a future in that kind of stuff. We also love the isometric turn-based games. So I'm a great fan of XCOM and Shadowrun and Battletech. So I'm looking forward to all that myself. Speaking of those other games, what is your favorite, uh, favorite, favorite video game and why? Favorite video game of all time is Warren Robinette's Adventure for the Atari 2600. Uh, because it, in 4K, it invented the adventure game genre. It made it visual. It's incredible. Uh, I mean, the guy, it's like landing on the moon, what he did. He wrote an entire game where you're a dot. You can pick up a sword. You can kill a dragon. You can get a key. You can open a castle. You get chased by a bat. All on the Atari. I mean, that's amazing. I'm an old man. So before all of that, it's incredible stuff. So and the guy was like 21 at the time, and he just wrote it on a whim. So. So uh, when can people uh, look forward to seeing this game? Is it going to be on Kickstarter, or what's the, the story with that? With that? We, we haven't really made a call. It's unlikely it will be on Kickstarter. We're going to be publishing it ourselves. It'll be out on Steam in early 2016. Uh, last question, any uh, plans for uh, good old games or possibly Linux support? We like Linux. Uh, currently the build supports Linux. We're not sure, but yeah, it's quite possible. And uh, GOG, uh, we're great friends with GOG. There's been no kind of talks about it yet, but you know, we've done our other games on there. So I wouldn't be surprised if it turned up on there, but no decision yet. Cool. Thanks very much. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Take care. All right, guys, special thanks to Corsair. They're the reason that we're here. Be sure to check out all of our coverage, and you can enter to win a Scimitar mouse. Just go ahead and click on the screen to see our Corsair video. Good luck in winning the Scimitar MMO gaming mouse.